U.S. intelligence agencies were closely tracking Prigozhin's ongoing challenge to Russia's military leaders before it happened, and they had briefed key members of Congress last week before the Wagner Group leader openly took on Vladimir Putin or the Kremlin. Moments ago, I asked the former CIA director about what it all means for Putin. The situation is highly dynamic. I don't think the threat to Putin's rule is by any means over at this point. Joining me now is one of the top lawmakers in the Gang of Eight who were briefed on Prigozhin's plans, Democratic Center and Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner. Senator, thank you so very much. I know you, you can't Andrew. share anything you've been briefed on, but what's your understanding of what is happening in Russia in the last few days, with Prigozhin saying in the last hour he was not trying to overthrow the government, uh, and well, then he turned around to avoid Russian bloodshed? Well, first of all, Andrea, and I um, appreciate you recognizing that, unlike some folks in American politics, I do understand that if you receive classified information, it needs to stay secret. Otherwise, people's literally I know. people's lives could be in jeopardy. But the, but the truth is, what Prigozhin was saying, you know, if you follow this, it's been in plain, it's been hiding in plain sight, literally for weeks, as he's condemned the Russian conduct in the war in Ukraine, condemned the the, the leadership. Uh, the message he laid out Saturday morning as his forces were advancing, uh, I hope the Russian people heard, where he basically said it was all a sham, Putin's pretenses for going into Ukraine. There was never any threat from the Ukrainians. I hope that message got out. Uh, I think it's remarkable, though, that with a relatively small number of troops, he was able to take over Rostov. Now, Rostov was the command center for the whole war in Russia. You know, I'm sorry, war in Ukraine. And the fact that he was then able to get within 120 miles of Moscow, even though Putin had gone on the air and called him virtually a traitor on Saturday morning. Uh, we have a lot of unanswered questions. But uh, as your previous commentator said, you know, the, the volatility uh, in, in terms of what the future of Putin and that regime is, is still, I think, up in the air. I, I do think we know this, that the Putin of five years ago, the Putin that was more engaged as opposed to the Putin of today, who is so isolated, who doesn't want to hear any bad news, uh, I, I can't imagine uh, uh, the Wagner Group leader making as much progress if he tried this a number of years back. Can you imagine Vladimir Putin going on national television, accusing Boghossian of being a traitor, literally, of a stab in the back, and projecting vulnerability, as he did on Saturday morning? Well, saying that, and then five hours later, cutting a deal with this same Boghossian, and again, remember, neither one of these guys are good guys. We all know uh, how awful and evil in so many ways Putin has been. But Prigozhin, you know, he is head of this uh, mercenary group who've done atrocities in Ukraine, in Syria, in countries in Africa. Remember, Prigozhin it was the, the owner of the Internet Research Agency who interfered in our elections in 2016, and he is subject to American indictment. So uh, this is a very uh, bizarre circumstance, but the lead-up in terms of Prigozhin's comments, this has been been happening literally for weeks and in some cases months, calling out the leadership of the Russian war effort. And do we have any idea where Prigozhin is? Well, I understand literally as I was coming on air that he is, uh, uh, says he's in Minsk and he actually is, and get this, this is just reports that he is in a, one of the only hotels in Minsk that doesn't have any windows. And I say that because, again, this wow. has been in public reporting, that there have been a number of um, uh, Russian entity individuals who uh, have gotten run afoul of Putin over the last year and a half who have mysteriously fallen out of fifth, sixth, seventh floor windows. So if he is in Minsk in a hotel with no windows, uh, that would show at least what his mindset is in terms of how his relationships are with Putin at this point. That's remarkable. What does this say? What does this tell you about Lukashenko? He's been an, an ally, a vassal, if you will, uh, subject subject to Putin. But is he striking out on his own? Is he? Well, could he be one of the few winners here? Well, remember Lukashenko when there were actual elections in Belarus. All of the outside observers said Lukashenko lost. So, following in that kind of uh, oligarch. 
autocratic system. He stayed in power with support from Putin. So the fact that he sudden, somehow magically brokered this deal when the Wagner forces were literally about 120 miles outside of Moscow, and those who said, you know, well, uh, Prigozhin's comments this morning saying he didn't want to have any, any you know, bloodshed. Well, I, you know, I believe this isn't, doesn't come from intelligence. This comes from your network and others who showed images of uh, explosions in Russia, showed images supposedly of Russian helicopters being shot down. Uh, this sounds like it was a, uh, a giant mess that everybody's trying to reframe and rewrite the history of what was literally happening real time around and watched by the whole world literally within the last 48 hours. And what, would you, what percentage would you put on Putin not trying to somehow retaliate against Prigozhin and permitting an armed force to exist, to coexist with his military? Well, Could Shogu of, tolerate that? Well, Shogu, who is the defense head, had been trying to force these mercenary forces, the Wagner forces, to sign a contract and fall under uh, his normal chain of command. Uh, Prigozhin and his, his forces said no and said no, and that was one of the cons uh, to this effort. I, I cannot believe, even if Prigozhin is off in, in Belarus at this point, that all of these Wagner forces, who have t borne the brunt many times of some of the most uh, bloody fighting in Ukraine, are suddenly going to, you know, simply turn around and salute a set of at least military leaders that uh, have demonstrated pretty much ineptness on the field. Senator Mark Warner, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, thank you so much on all of this breaking news. We appreciate it.